Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Dallas. I'm Nick Miller alongside Mo Raval. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. You have got, you've got a fantastic reanimator brew here. You came up and you just showed it to me. I said, we're doing the deck tech. There was no hesitation involved. You've got four colors here and you've got a swath of creatures you're bringing yeah. back. Yeah, we can do everything basically. Anything you want. All right. The linchpins of the deck here are, as you would imagine, for a reanimator show. You've got your Seder Wayfinder. And then you have your reanimation spells being Whip of Erebus. We've seen that before. Yes. But then we have Rescue from the Underworld and Fearsome Awakening. Card I had to look at three or four times. All my opponents have looked at that. Yeah. I was like, what is this? Yeah. Now you're not reanimating any dragons, but you're reanimating a lot of other creatures. I'm gonna I'm gonna point some out and you tell me how you came to these this conclusion of cards. You got Bear of the Heavens, you're gonna want to look that one up. <laughs> Solo New Phyrexia, Ashen Rider in Triplicate, yeah. as well as Hornet Queen, Siege Rhino, Butcher the Horror, and a couple of Doomwake Giants. Yes. Okay, so let's start over here with the Doomwake Giants. Uh, those actually, this is my second tournament with this deck. Uh, I had these in the board, and I decided to put them in the main just because of the meta and the way all the decks are playing tokens or having 1-1s one or right. having like aggressive creatures with the uh, one butt or something. So that's in there. We have uh, Bear of the Heaven and Soul New Phyrexia. That's a combo by itself right there. If you're able to uh, mill Soul New Phyrexia and you have Bear of the Heaven in play and you're able to sack them either with uh, Rescue or you can Murderous Cut it. Uh -huh. You can Murderous Cut it and or your opponent can destroy it. You can activate Soul New Phyrexia's ability from the graveyard and make all your permanents indestructible and all your, all your, permanent, uh, all your opponent's permanents become, uh, they, they d destroy at the end step. So they can't really save them. That's all permanents, including lands. That's what uh, Patrick yeah. Sullivan would call a combo. <laughs> That's a combo, yeah. yeah. We have a Hornet Queen. You know, you got to have the Hornet Queen. you got to make the four tokens, and they can get rid of it, and you just bring it back. We have Butcher as another way of sacking Bear in order to trigger the, the destroy all permanents mm -hmm. ability. And one of my favorite cards is Ashen Rider. You know, you got to have those in there. So you're playing a lot of uh, tricolor decks and a lot of decks that uh, need their three color lands, so if they're playing um, dual lands and they have a couple of tri lands in there and you're able to reanimate, uh, reanimate one of these Ashen Riders, you're able to exile the tri land and you keep him off their third color. And he can keep swinging in the air, he's a 5-5 five five in the air, so that's always like really, really good. And usually they try to get rid of him with like a Valor Stance. He just keeps getting Valor Stance every day. So once he gets Valor Stance, uh, I exile another one of their lands and they're like, what have I done? <laughs> yeah. And then Siege Rhino, you gotta have yeah. Siege Rhino. I love Siege Rhino. I love going uh, Siege Rhino, uh, turn four, and then turn five, playing whatever, and then turn six, playing Seed the Unwritten. That way I get two of my creatures. I can just have both my Bearer and my Solo New Phyrex in play. And of course, we can't overlook sacking a Siege Rhino to rescue for the Underworld, exactly. getting all the extra value yeah. on the way back. Yeah. Now, now your base here, you've got the the Karyatid and the Wayfinder base along with uh, Corsair of Crufix. But then you've got a nice swath of removal here as well. You've got Abzan Charm, Utter End, Murderous Cut, a lot of ways to stay in the game. Yeah. Now your red is mainly just for Tormenting Voice and the Bear, correct? And Butcher. And Butcher? Yes. So what what came to the, how'd you come to the conclusion for this suite of rea rea reanimation spells? Well, uh, the way I saw it, uh, the rescue by itself, four rescues, it's kind of slow if you're facing a lot of uh, aggressive decks. And you know, you're like, end of turn, sack my guy, and they're like, I'll beat you in the face for 20. And you're like, okay, nothing happens to your upkeep. So then I was like, all right, I want to put some fearsome awakenings in there. Uh -huh. So I was like, all right, let's do four fearsome awakenings. But then I was like, no, you know, you got to have the rescue because there's a lot of removal, there's a lot of control decks, and they're like, end of turn, kill your guy, and then you're like, haha, in response, rescue. Sack my guy, bring back two guys, you just wasted a kill spell, and in my upkeep, I'm probably going to exile two of your lands or something, you know? Now there's a lot of interesting ways you get the cards in the graveyard other than the obvious ones with the Wayfinder and Tormenting Voice. You've got See the Unwritten here as a card that not only can get you creatures, but fill up your yard as well. Yes. Then you mentioned Tassiger's Ability will Tassiger. also fill the yard. Yes, Tassiger's Ability will fill the yard. Set your Wayfinder. Uh, Tormenting Voice, uh, these are really good uh, early on if you want to discard uh, your big stuff, if you're not ready to play it and you need uh, smaller stuff. Or uh, basically you, you want to be able to cast everything. And, and this deck's really, really good against like mid-range or a control. And the only thing you really have a problem with is you basically battle with uh, the aggro decks for a little bit. But if you're able to land a whip, you know, it goes highly in your favor. Uh, of course, Whip of Erebos just good all around when you're bringing anything back as well. Yeah. 
Sideboard, you had a couple of interesting choices. Erebos here, going along with the whip. Yeah, you gotta have the god, you gotta have the whip, you know, you can't leave him out, you know. Of course, you have Thoughtseize as a way to just combat the control decks. Yes. But then you also have a couple Crux of Fate, which with all the reanimation, doesn't seem that bad either. Yes. You're three and one so far. What are you looking to play against uh, with this deck? Well, I've played three Jeskai aggro decks, and I have played the other deck was a mono red. So I'm playing a lot of aggro decks, mm -hmm. and I figured that would be like my worst uh, matchup. Well, this deck doesn't really have a bad matchup, but you know, um, as long as I get my uh, Doomwake Giants out, you know, it's fine. It's like, oh, you got guys, all right, kill them all. All right. So another thing that people don't realize is if you have one Doomwake in the board. I mean, not in the board, Doomwake in the graveyard yep. and one in play, you can sack the Doomwake, target the other Doomwake, get both of them back, give minus four, minus four to all of your opponent's creatures, which is really, really awesome. But I'm hoping to play a lot of uh, mid-range decks and a lot of control decks. That way I can just like play Ashen Rider and have them read it while I yeah. plan my next move. A lot of readers in this deck. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. you force a lot of people to read more cards this week in your 3-in-1. Mo, thanks for joining me here in the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Dallas.